everybody, this is Joe Workman, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing how to manage images using our CMS. Now, the video that we are gonna do now is actually gonna to apply to both Easy CMS and Total CMS. Everything works exactly the same in both of them. So without further ado, let's jump in and see all the powerful things we can do to edit our images with the CMS. So here I have uh, the Easy CMS page that we've seen before in other videos. And this is the demo project that ships with Easy CMS, and you can also download it anytime from our documentation portal. Now in this video, we're gonna show you a few things. We're gonna see this banner image here. We're gonna actually edit and change that. And we also notice that further down inside the tab, we have an image, but it's a square cropped thumbnail image. And you'll notice if I click on that, I will then see the full resolution image opened up in a light box. Let's see how we can do this with the CMS image stacks. So here we have my admin page and we'll notice that I have set up an area to edit this image on my admin page. Now let's show you how simple it is to replace this image with another one. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work within Rapid Weaver because it doesn't actually allow you to drag and drop images onto it. So we're just gonna preview locally in Safari. And here I've just previewed uh, you know, my admin page locally in Safari, and I can go ahead and just drag and drop a new image onto this one. And like magic, my image is immediately replaced on the actual project. Now, if you miss that, let's do that again. I'm gonna go ahead and put the original image back in. Drag and drop my image, it uploads it, it's processing the image, and it is immediately saved. Okay, now, whoa, that was really cool. Did you see how he just dragged and dropped the image onto the browser it automatically uploaded, okay? Now, if that wasn't cool enough, there is a lot of stuff going on in the background. When I drag and drop that image, it not only got uploaded, okay, but that image got resized down to a defined maximum size. This makes sure that our customers are not uploading 10 megapixel images to their websites it's gonna rescale that image down to what you as the designer has, des has defined it to be. So in this instance, I've defined my maximum size to be 2000 pixels wide. It doesn't matter how big the image I'm gonna upload, it's gonna resize that image down to 2000 pixels wide. This is gonna ensure that your customers don't take those 15, 20 megapixel images off their camera and upload them to their website. Now, if that's not cool enough, it's done two other things, amazing things, is it's also created two thumbnails for us, a proportionally scaled thumbnail, as well as a square cropped thumbnail for the image. Whoa, Let me, hold on, gotta pat myself on the back for that one. Okay, that's really cool. We uploaded an image once, and we have three versions of the same image immediately available on our websites. And that's exactly what we've done here with this cropped image. If we notice, I uploaded one image of this Golden Gate Bridge, the CMS created the square cropped thumbnail, and then can automatically create a light boxed version to the full resolution image. This really couldn't be easier. Let's see how it gets done. So here we are with an edit mode on my content page. And we'll notice that this particular image is set to be my banner image. Now you're probably familiar with the CMS and I've set up my CMS ID to, for this particular image to be a banner. I've defined this particular image type. It's hard coded to be a JPEG. Uh, so I wanna make sure that the JPEG Im image is called. And then we define what image do we want to display. We can set the original image, which is the full you know, the full resolution image. We can do a thumbnail, which is the proportionally scaled down thumbnail, or we can display the square thumbnail. We can also have the ability to actually have an action if an image isn't available. 
So let's say a customer has accidentally deleted an image from the, you know, the CMS. You can actually say when the image is missing, what do we want to do? You can hide it. You can do nothing, which is the default, or you can actually show a default image and allows you to actually define a default image uh, for this particular area. Uh, we can define the alt tag and we'll go over that in a little bit. You can either import the alt tag from easy CMS or you can hard code a alt tag directly in the stack. Uh, then we have the auto light box feature. And then lastly, we can make the image grow to the container no matter what the width is and add a link to our image. Now let's go ahead and scroll down and we'll look at the image that we added to the tab. And if we look here, I set the size to be a square thumbnail and then I checked the auto light box feature. And what this does is it will insert the square thumbnail and then when I click on it, it auto light boxes to the full resolution image. Now, all of this is extremely easy to administer. If we look at the easy admin page here, let's go and we'll see the first image edit stack that's on the page is used to control the image banner. And we know that because if we select it, we'll see that we have a CMS ID of banner and that ties to the CMS ID of the content of the image. Okay. Next, we'll see that we want to ensure that this image is going to be a JPEG and you can also choose PNG. Now, a little bit of warning. Most of the time, you're going to want to have the image type set to JPEG because this will give us the best image compression and whatnot for our websites. Now, however, if a customer drags a PNG onto the image upload, it will be converted to a JPEG. And what that means is because JPEG doesn't support transparency like PNG does, if that PNG image that the customer tries to add contains any transparent pixels, those pixels will turn black. Next, we have preview size, and this just simply defines what, you'll, what size you'll see when you preview the image inside the admin page, okay? Next, this is where we can control the actual generation and sizes of our image, as well as the thumbnails. So by default, the image stack will actually create two thumbnails for you. You can turn that off if you are sure that you don't want to use the thumbnail feature just by simply unchecking that box. Next is the resize logic. Now, most of the time you're going to want to set this to auto. And what that's going to do is that will automatically determine if the image is a landscape image or a portrait image and scale the maximum size that you define here to be height on portrait and width on landscaped images. Now, if you want to ensure that the width is always going to be whatever is defined here, you could set the resize logic to be landscape. Conversely, if you want to make sure that the sizes that you define in this stack are always the height, you can set the resize logic to be portrait. However, like I said, most of the time you're going to want to set this to auto because that's going to work best in most of the situations. The image quality is the percentage of compression that you have for your image. So for instance, most of the time you're not going to want to set this to 100% because it's going to produce the most maximum sized file size for that particular image. Now I've noticed for most images, setting it from 85 to 95% is really the sweet spot. So you can play around with it to see exactly um, you know, the image quality to size uh, that you might like. Next is going to be the maximum pixel size for the full, full resolution image, the thumbnail image, and the square thumbnail image. And as you see, you have individual controls for each of these. And this is what defines the size that the image will be proportionally scaled down to when a customer uploads a very large image. Now, earlier I said we were going to learn how to manage alt tags for every single image. And if we go to the admin page and you hover over an image, you'll notice that there is a toolbar that is displayed at the top of the image, along with a few buttons. 
Now, the button here on the right is obviously a trash button. And if you, if you click on that, you'll get a confirmation box saying, are you sure you wanna delete this image? And that delete button will delete the image from the CMS. Now, if we saw earlier, we actually have the ability to, you know, customize the action when an image is not available. So, you know, we could have it, so if the customer doesn't want a particular image to be shown at all, they could just delete that image and then we could set the action to hide on the content side. Now the buttons on the left allow us to do some other things. The first button on the left allows us to define our alt tag. In this particular instance, this alt tag is incorrect because this isn't the Golden Gate Bridge that we're looking at. This is downtown San Francisco. If you notice, just like the text boxes when we edit text inside the CMS, when I change the alt tag, the box turns red to tell me that I actually haven't saved this yet. And then I can go ahead and just click the save button and that will actually save the alt tag. And if I were to preview this inside uh, my web browser, we'll notice that the alt tag is actually changed for that image. Now this last button, if you click on it, you'll notice that it provides you with three different image URLs. And this is very powerful because this is how we can integrate CMS images into third-party stacks. Now what's great about these URLs is that I can actually ensure that this URL to this image will never change. Whatever image I upload via the CMS, it will always be resolved to these URLs. Now, if we load these URLs directly into the browser, we'll see that in this instance, I have the full resolution image. I can see the proportionally scaled thumbnail as well as the square cropped thumbnail for the image. Now, remember that all three of these images are dynamically created whenever the customer uploads the single image to the CMS. So that really does it for image management inside the CMS. As you see, it's dead simple. All you need to do is drag and drop your images onto the admin area and the stack in the CMS do all the work for you. It creates scaled down versions to make sure that you don't have customers uploading large files. It dynamically creates thumbnails, proportional thumbnails and square cropped thumbnails. And it, auto, it can create an auto lightbox for you if you use the CMS image stack. And if you wanna integrate it with third-party image stacks, you can do that very easily as long as it supports warehoused images. That's because you can simply copy the URL to the image, whether that be the full-scaled you know, full image or the proportional thumbnail or the square thumbnail. They all have warehoused image URLs that will always be, you can always ensure that they're up to date whenever the customer uploads a new image, right? Now, here's some examples of what you could do. You could actually use this to maybe, you know, manage a background image using Eclipse or background images of your site using Jack, right? All of these can be warehoused and supported and managed through the CMS. Maybe you're using my point stack to have an image map and your customer can manage that image behind there using the CMS. And then you can actually use the custom login screen with PageSafe and that allows your customer to actually manage the warehoused image that controls the background of their login screen. So as you see, we have a lot of options here. You can have the CMS manage images and use them everywhere. It is very, very powerful. And you know, we all want images. And I don't think that it's could be any easier to manage images with than it is with total and easy CMS. So I hope you use it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you love it. I hope you really use it to make your websites great and to make your customers happy. So um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoy it and happy weaving. Bye.